السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلا تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له أما بعد ذكر الله خير ما يدير اسمك ولا سترز ولا أسخى الله سبحانه وتعالى تبنسنا وذس gathering and naked for the sick So we were talking about in the past week how someone can protect himself from committing sins or to be more specific how could someone protect himself from committing zina and we said Ibn Qayyim he said there are two things that would enable someone to uh, uh, protect himself from from committing zina and he said the very first one was what lowering his gaze and today we're going to be talking about the second reason the second reason. So last week we, we spoke about the benefits of lowering our gaze, and we said that there's almost nine or ten benefits to that. And today we're going to be talking about the second reason of how could someone protect himself from committing zina, or generally speaking, how would someone protect himself from committing a sin? And Abdul Qayyim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, he said the following uh, sentence, and Wallahi, brother and sister, is so beautiful. He said, انشغال القلب بما يصده عن ذلك that you would the second reason that would enable someone from committing a sin is for himself to make his heart busy that anything that would prevent him from doing so so the, the issue here is how can I as an individual as a human being how can I make my heart busy with things that is going to be make me that is going to protect me from committing sins you know and Whatever I'm going to be making myself busy with, you know, because brother, sister, we talked about this in the past that when someone is uh, having a lot of time, extra time, uh, he is more prone to committing sins than a person who's busy. So this is just kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, general uh, wisdom that anybody would know that if you are busy, you're less likely to commit sins. But and if uh, commit sins, if you have if you have more time. Obviously, someone will be more than uh, more than likely to commit sin because he's he's he don't know what to do. He's uh, he's uh, uh, um, you know he have nothing he have nothing to do in life, and he possibly he does not have a lot of goals that he need, he wanted to achieve. So therefore, you know this, this is the, one of the one of the doors of the shaitan into the heart of the human being is by having being lonely and having extra time. So. The issue here, brother and sister, is generally speaking, one of the things that someone is ought to do is make himself busy. Make yourself busy with things that are of a greater status. Make yourself busy with things that are important in life. If the, the person or the individual who does not have goals in life, as if he's not living. You know, you know, each, each person who have high goals you always going to see him successful. And I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be. I want to learn more about my deen. I want to increase my faith. I want to be a better. Uh, I want to gain the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I want to learn more about Islam. I want to be a successful businessman. I want to bigger house. I want uh, a nicer car. You know. I want to have establish a family. You know, etc. So when, so when someone have goals, most likely he's going to be working toward his goals. He's going to arrange steps. But when someone when someone is is to have nothing to do, when someone have nothing to do, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Uh, he, obviously, he's going to be, <clears throat> and he's going to be sitting around uh, playing video games. Obviously, uh, he's going to be sitting around playing video games, and and he's and he's absolutely not doing anything to achieve these goals, you know, um, and etc. So the, the, so the point here, and generally speaking, brothers and sisters, that the individual must be busy and protect him from, from anything that is going to lead him into committing sins. Now, part of this busyness, part of this business of the individual, his heart to be have to be occupied. And Ibn Qayyim, he said, it have to be occupied with one of two things. If someone, his heart is occupied, his heart must be occupied with one of two things. He said, إِمَّا خَوْفٌ مُقْلِقٌ أَوْ حُبٌ مُزْعِجٌ أَوْ حُبٌ مُزْعِجٌ He said, it's one of two things. It's either that you have, his heart is fear, fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
or his heart is uh, in anxious love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if someone have either or both, <laughs> you will see him always trying to make his heart busy with, the, with, with, with either one of these two. Why is that? For instance, if someone is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's fearful of his punishment. He knows that this if he did this, this might happen. If he died on this sin, this is going to happen. If I did commit this sin, that possibly I'm going to have a bad outcome. How I'm going to be? How I'm going to? How I'm going to answer my Lord if I did this? And if I, if I, if I did that, he knows. So he always fearful of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You know, and and this is this is this is the yani, here again. We always say this. We're not. The point here is not for you to be. Uh, you know, fearful to the point that you are, you cannot sleep. No, the point is here: the fear is going to motivate you to do something that is productive. You know, so how So it's, it's a, so his heart is either one of these two two stages. Either he's a, a state of love with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's always anxious about his love. He's always wanted to see how he gain the satisfaction of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Or he's what he is fearful for, fearful of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And this, and, and that's why the, 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 tr the true believer, brothers and sisters, his heart is busy with either one of these two worshippings, because you know he's he's you know he, he could be but one, or he could be both, or if someone is like a dead, <laughs> you know he could be he could have neither. So you know, for instance, like I said, when someone is in in love with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, yeah, when you are in a state of love, and let's say, and here. Forgive me, I'm going to give an example of when, you, when someone loves a human being. Like, for instance, if someone loves his mother or loves his wife, he seems always anxious. How how could he satisfy her? You know, how how could be always be you know you know number one? Or how can I be always try to make her happy? How can how how can I make sure that she loves me back? So he's always you know his his, his brain and his heart is occupied. You know, you know, and he's always trying to evaluate. You know uh, whether you know, evaluate whether 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 I am um, racing enough to to attain all her heart. You know, so it's important for someone because this, this is when someone in in you know he, he's in a state of uh, anxiety with his love. Not just he just love her because thing is, Allah, human being love a lot of things, and we can't be in love of only one thing. Like for instance, you see someone he loved his car, he loved his wife, he loved his, uh, his 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 children, he loved his parents, but yeah. Yani, the question here is that is he you know is he which one of these two loves is occupying him which one of these two loves is making him move the most you see so that's how, so when you when you love when you love something so much what's going to happen you're always working toward it all day you're always anxiously thinking if this person is happy with you or not and that's the way a believer would be working when he is working toward his lord you know he all want to see is does allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me is Allah is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is the most in my heart, you know? And Ibn al Qayyim he said, neither the love or the fear is not going to happen except with two things. Now, so and he he's he's breaking things down. He said, Well, I'm gonna summarize it again. He said, How I'm gonna make myself my heart busy? He said, you, you, you know, you, you have to have one of two things, either love or fear. And now he's telling you, how can I have either one of those two? He said, one, you have to have the insight. Number one, in order for you have to have love or fear or both into your heart, you have you must have an insight. An insight in which that the word for instance tells you, you know, meaning that I know uh, that what what's going to lead me to the love or what's going to lead me to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's always, oh, yeah, so he must have be aware. It's like awareness. Oh, 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 oh. And that's why you see all, all those brothers and sisters, people who learn no, most about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're aware. You know, they're aware of what lead me to his punishment, what's going to lead me to his to his love. If I did this, this Allah's gonna this what this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is gonna do to me. If I did that, that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. He's in a state of awareness, he have a correct insight. So and he's all, all you know, he he almost expecting the good and the bad that is gonna come. From any movement that, that that he does, you know, if I did this, Allah subhanahu wa taala might reward me, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala might elevate his star in his stead. But if I did that, Allah I might move away from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and maybe something bad is going to happen to me. So, so the very first thing is what insight.
And a second thing is that قوة العزم والصبر, the strength of patience. So brothers and sisters, you, someone might be aware, like for instance, maybe someone, he might uh, know that if I did this, this is going to happen to me. But he's too weak to stop the sin. Or he's too weak, he's too weak for him to work toward the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't have the patience. So you must have both. You must have that. You must have the insight and the, the strength of patience. You know, when someone have both, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in the Quran, he said, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا لَمَّا صَبَرُوا وَكَانُوا بِآيَاتِنَا يُوقِنُونَ And we have made them imams, leaders, guide other people into our our pathway. When? When they became patients, when, when they were patients. So imam, when you're an imam or a leader, you have to have knowledge, right? You must have insight. But when, when did they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them leaders they would, to guide other people? When they were patient. So you must have both. Once you have the insight, once you have the insight, once you have the insight, and once you are patient on what you know is right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would elevate you and you would have start feeling the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, become anxiously in love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you start, you, you, you're always in a state, a state of fear to move you anyway, anyway, and anyway, anything that is going to be of sin toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يعني, يعني, وال, um, when, when they were become, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're going to be saved in this world, when you have patience and you follow the right way. In order for you to have to, in order for you to find, follow the right way, you must have insight. And in order, in order for you to be stick in that way, you must have patience. You see, and that's what Ibn Al-Qaim is bringing these these evidences uh, this from. You know, again, this is this is um, yeah, th this is the kind of um, yeah, yani, the steps that really takes an individual brother for him for him to to move forward. And and Subhanallah, in order for someone to have the love, you have to work hard, brothers and sisters. And yani, you must have, like I said, you must have goals. You must know who you know. Why you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know the consequences of not having the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know that you and you know that you know, that if you miss out in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a total disaster. And many people don't they don't feel it. They don't feel it. But for him, but but he might feel the the wrath if he broke up with his wife or broke up with his uh, girlfriend, you know. He's like, oh, it's the end of the world. How come? But the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, there is actually no comparison between loving a human being and loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator. But subhanAllah, this is the problem that many people are, are facing in which that they don't feel that love. They haven't worked toward it, you know? And 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 for and, and, and they don't know it's an actual punishment. It's an actual punishment to miss out in that love. So to miss out in the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an actual punishment. So it's important, brothers, that even if you don't have that, it's, 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 it's okay. Work toward it. Do things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. You know, it try to see, seek the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It try to move away and, and be, be somehow in a state of fear of anything that's going to gain you the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when someone tries to always evaluate himself, is and in, in, in which that you know uh, one, one yesterday to today does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love me more or less? Did I do more or did I do less? The, the, at, at what stage is is my stage is my love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it is it lower today or is it higher today? Should I should, how can I work myself toward a higher stage of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he's always evaluating and always wondering. He's all, and this is kind of occupying him, you know. And again, I'm not saying that, that he disregard everything else. No. And again, the scholars have talked about something called يعني, Tawheed al-Mahabba, you know, like, يعني, in which that, يعني, the monotheism of love, in which that they said that the monotheism of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest love in your heart, number one. The monotheism of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that but the, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the biggest into your heart. That's number one. Second, it is it is it is the it is what what comes first. 
يعني if I want, if I want, for instance, I love my children, but I love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And if and if it come to it, I might leave to my children for me to answer the call of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So I have to, I, I'm stuck between two things: loving my children and love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But which one come first? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So second is the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not only the biggest, but only come first. The third, <clears throat> the third criteria for monotheism of loving Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is that all the other thing, all the other love, all the other things that I love Him and worth. Follow the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like for instance, I love my wife. Why? Because you know, loving my wife is gonna is gonna lead me to, to is gonna make, become make me a better Muslim. I love my children, I love my parents, even I love my house because this is something I, I, I work hard for and I should take care of. And Prophet Muhammad told us that we should, we should be we, we should be look, you know, we should uh Make sure that that our houses are appropriate and looking nice. So all the other things that I love follow the love of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So when you, when someone have these three, this is what they call the monotheism of loving Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that's and that's the way the way the Muslim would operate. And his and his his desire is following that, and I mean he's not following his own desire, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Afraid man attakhda ilaha hawa." وهو على علم وهو على علم وختم الله على سمعه وبصره وجعل على 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 بصره the show فما يديهم بعد الله so some people have <coughs> have made their own desire and their own god whatever the desire would tell them he would follow along so again this is kind of يعني in summary the second point of how should we make us to stay away from sin is to make ourselves busy and we could make ourselves busy and, and hard busy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by either loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with anxiety or fearing him. And, and then <clears throat> we talked about how to do these two with Allah ta'ala. khair, brother and sister, for listening. I hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make all of us benefit from this. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.